Okay, we've got a slideshow coming up. And while that's coming up, how many of you are from Memphis? <laughs> okay, wow. do you, do y'all realize the art community is huge here? Mm -hmm. For those that don't, it really, really is. And uh, the Memphis area has a lot of good connections. But I got into art therapy, actually not therapy, but coaching because of what I do. It's just a natural fit, right? So uh, just a little bit about, well, let me give you this quote. Go on to the next slide. Um, art washes from the soul, the dust of everyday life by Pablo Picasso. And most people think of Picasso that they're crazy paintings, but this is actually one of his paintings here too. Um, so art coaching and therapy, therapeutic art is also not just creating, it's also looking and observing and absorbing visually what's in front of you. Okay, go to the next slide. How many of you are doodlers? Okay. All right, let me tell you some facts about this. Um, I know I've always been a doodler. When I was in school up to this day, whether I'm listening to lectures, I'm doodling. And so a lot of people think, well, she, well, she's not paying attention whatsoever. But there is reasoning behind doodling. It does help you focus. Um, but if you notice uh, right before you, uh, there is, um, well, we'll get to that in just a second. Um, but according to Harvard, there's a study that shows that those that doodled while listening to a bore, boring lecture, <laughs> hopefully this won't be, uh, recalls, recalls 29% recalled 29 more information than those who didn't. So if you're a doodler, you're actually absorbing more than most. So that's pretty cool. And an interesting fact, 26 of 44 presidents doodled from Roosevelt to Reagan to, to Kennedy. I uh, don't know about Trump, but that's just what I pulled up. Uh, there's definitely something that penetrates my thoughts. And when I do it, there, I'm constantly processing something. And what's interesting is it triggers things within me even deeper when I'm listening and doodling. But you can look up doodling. I think you're muted. Try it now. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. Okay. okay. Sorry about that. Uh, for those that are in insurance agents, um, this these are people that I like to connect to HR and insurance companies because they want to better their employees, right? And so, with that said, when there's group therapy or group coaching with art. It improves the, the uh, focus at work. It also focuses uh, um, not only what they're doing, but also in production. So there's a lot of cool things there, but it also goes down from even corporate all the way into the classroom. So when, when, they, when kids are playing and they're drawing, they're, they're doing something really interesting in the brain. And that's for a neural scientist to come in and discuss that. But there's a lot of cool studies on that. So let's go to the next slide. Um, all right, so if you look in front of you, there's, um, there's a mandala there. That's that little circle. Uh, and there's some colored pencil. So I'm gonna encourage you to doodle and color and play on this piece of paper as I go through my hopefully not boring lecture. <laughs> All right, so uh, with, let's see, let's go on to the next one. Um, oh, and by the way, there's no wrong or right way to do this. If you wanna color outside the lines, color outside the lines. I'm always a color outside the lines kind of gal anyway, uh, but be creative, have fun and enjoy. But while you're doing that, think about what you're doing. Your hands are on that pencil. So be mindful of what that looks like. You're, you're, you're scribbling, you, there's, a, there's a texture that you feel with that, whether it's crayons or paint, there's always tactile engagement with that, which is another reason why your brain retains even more. All right, so let's go into the next slide. Uh, let's see here, the difference. Getting there. 
Did we go too fast, too far? All right, so the difference between uh, coaching and therapy. Yeah, that's good. Uh, therapy focuses on mental health and emotional healing. And this therapy helps you to learn to heal. Next slide. While life coaching focuses on setting and achieving goals, it will help empower you to achieve those goals. And then the next slide. Uh, therapy is rooted in the past to the present. So in therapy, you face the past in order to move forward. Okay, and the next slide. All right, so this is where we talk about where coaching focuses on the future. Coaches, coaching focuses on improving the here and the now. So there's benefits to both of these. So whether you're getting therapeutic art counseling or you are getting coaching, there's benefits to both, but they are two separate things. And I'm in the coaching realm. So um, raise your hand if you dabble in the arts or you're creative or you like to doodle. You know, I know there's a photographer, a couple, well, I know there's at least one photographer in the house. So it doesn't matter what creativity that you do, there is something valuable in that mental health. And so, um, uh, Wiz, what, is, what, what do you do? You, wood, carving. wood carving. Oh, cool. That's awesome. So that's very therapeutic, I'm sure, because the details that you can get into with that. I would like to see some of the work. <laughs> yeah. And I know if y'all have never seen uh, Linda's work, it's beautiful as well. All right. So let's go to the next slide. All right. So did you know that research studies show that art enhances brain function and well-being? There's so much, oh my gosh, there's so much scientific evidence that proves and enhances brain function, but it also impacts the brain waves and the patterns and emotion. It also impacts the nervous system and it can actually raise serotonin levels. Art can change a person's outlook and the way they experience the world. Uh, there's, I mean, decades worth of research that has uh, provided, that's provided out there that shows that this happens and it proves that art impacts everything from over, um, overall academic achievement to social and emotional development and so much more. And also research has proven that arts develop the neural systems in that produce the um, broad, spectrum, uh, broad spectrum benefits ranging from motor skills to creativity and improved emotional balance. So simply put, the arts are invaluable to our proper functioning individually and in social society. Um, and here's a, here's a few ways not only do artists and non-artists can benefit from. So um, we're gonna go to the next slide, which we touch on research. So um, the uh, research has shown that engaging in just 45 minutes of art making significantly reduces the levels of cortisol. That's the stress hormone. <laughs> How many of y'all get, st get stressed in life? <laughs> How many of y'all been down the street and just get so stressed or have kids run around the house or, you know, there's so many things that stress us, but it, we want to decrease that stress because we all know that stress can be harmful for our bodies, right? Even good stress, like um, exercising is a stress, but it can be harmful for the body. But across, let's see here. 75 participants turns out that creating art is akin to meditation. So it forces the mind to distract and slow down. Uh, so it distracts from the busy day life. It helps you to gain into yourself and to have that relaxation. But it also helps us to slow that, that energy down. So many times we go, 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 go. How many of you have a full plate right now? I mean, just so much going on right? And it's hard to slow down. So when we take a few minutes to do something creative, it helps us to become more calm uh, and definitely less anxious. Um, so who else in here wouldn't like a little less stress in their life, right? And so I know I could use a little bit more art therapy every day. Um, all right, so the next slide we talk about confidence boosting. So um, confidence boosting, all right, let me ask you this. How many of you, when you were a kid, did drawings at school? And we took them home and we gave them to our parents or our mom. We had them put on the, uh, the refrigerator, right? And so as a child, we're proud. It's like, oh my gosh, you know, they're displaying my art, right? So that makes a child proud. But did you know that this continues through adulthood? When we do something, when we make something, uh, 
when you create something, does that give you not a sense of pleasure and of accomplishment when you create something that you've carved, right? No or would you say? No question. No question. It's right. I mean, it's it's amazing. Sometimes now artists, we can be our biggest critic, trust me. But when the piece is finished, it's like, oh, I did that, especially when you walk away and come back. And so let me ask uh, Linda, when you create these beautiful photographs and you see, especially when you're doing these headshots or the, the uh, women's uh, photography, I mean, how does that make you feel when you come back and look at that? Empowered. Empowered, because you're empowering them as well. So there's multiple reasons why that is, that's a great feeling to have. And then if someone was to look at your painting or look at your piece and make a remark because they notice it, that's another positive thing. Um, so it doesn't matter what you do, even if it's just a, a stick figure. I mean, who can draw a stick figure? <laughs> you can actually have fun drawing different kinds of stick figures. I mean, try it sometimes. So as you're doodling, flip that paper over and draw you a few little stick figures. Um, but that's how you get started. Just started doing little things like that. All right, so let's go to the next slide. Now, all these uh, paintings I have up here that I'm showing are um, from masters. Most of them are from old masters. And so you may recognize some of them. So, uh, but what's interesting is they're all a little different. And that's the cool part about it because everybody likes something different. Like some people may like Picasso, some may like Renoir, right? Some may like Michelangelo and some may like Dolly. Uh, they're totally different across the board. And so when you are creating, it doesn't matter what you do, whether you like coloring or if you like creating with clay or if you like photography or woodworking, it doesn't matter. You, it's something that's tactile and you're doing something for you. So if you are engaged with what you're doing, it total changes the mindset. All right, so um, by creating art, it helps us become better problem solvers. Uh, there's two reasons for this. One is that the practice of creating inherently without boundaries or perimeters. So think about that. You know, how many times we feel like we're enclosed, right? So it forces us out of that tightness, that, that inward closing that we may feel, whether we're at work and we feel like uh, we... How many of you have worked in corporate just says, I've got to get out of this box, right? And, and what happens is the mindset, you, you feel trapped and uh, it takes away that imagination. But when you start creating, it helps you dive back into that imagination. And when that imagination happens, again, it goes back to the serotonin. It helps to release those stresses and calm you down. So next time, if you're uh, in corporate and you're stuck in a box or stuck in a cube, just start doodling. It will, it will help you relax. But also think about how it also makes you think about how you um, convey your message. So when you start, when you pick up that pencil, that color pencil, you're, you believe it or not, you are choosing a color. You're making a choice. And when you make that choice, you are releasing an image in your head, whether it's just even just coloring in a, in, in a, one of the little circles or something, but you're seeing it before you actually do it. Um, and so that's that process. And so when your mind starts processing, that's part of the creativity of problem solving. So a lot of times when, how many of you have ever had um, major decisions or encountered a major problem at work, right? And you feel stuck. Literally take a few minutes, take a break, go do something creative because what you're doing is you're getting off that left side of the brain, then you hop it over to the right side, which I always say, I love staying on the right side of the brain. I don't like the left side, I gotta do it, but I like staying over here on the right side. And that's the creativity side. And then what happens is that starts balancing out the overall things that are going on in your mind. And when you come back to that problem, many times you can solve it a little faster or you see things differently to help you overcome those uh, obstacles. So um, habit of thinking creatively helps you to learn new resourceful ways of problem solving in your art, but also in life. So, and then I want, want to touch on, uh, it also turns problems into narratives. Uh, it can help us work through those narratives. Uh, by organizing our problems into the framework of a narrative, be it through writing, 
or song or visual art, it helps to bring a sense of order to the chaos that is represented in the problem. This in turn gives individuals a sense of predictability and control over our lives. And who wouldn't like a little more control over our lives, especially in today's society, right? So who all knows someone that goes to adult daycare? Um, you know, for dementia or Alzheimer's, right? Um, but let me, let me just touch on this. This is really, really cool. If you know them well, if you know people that go to these places, they have uh, creative arts programs within them. And uh, art making helps to reduce symptoms of anxiety and depression. And they're commonly experienced by those suffering from chronic illness. And also research showed that it can quite be, be quite beneficial to older adults, particularly those suffering from Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. This is because making art can improve cognitive function by strengthening or even creating new neural pathways in the brain. Listen to what I just said. It helps create neural pathways in the brain, new neural pathways in the brain. It helps the brain to adapt and stay healthier. Imagine that. In fact, the earlier we start, think about this, the earlier we can start using our creative brain regularly, the longer we can continue to do so, we can help the brain stay fit and healthy as we age. So that's a big deal. Creativity is a form of healthy lifestyle. So now you've seen the adult coloring books. Y'all seen those out there, the, you know, with all the really cool pictures in there. Um, this is a simple way to get started. So next time you see one, grab it. Grab that in a box of pencils and or, or they make those really cool uh, ink pens and stuff. And, um, and do, try to Work on those, do a little bit every day. You'd be surprised at how it makes you feel. And sometimes it can get kind of addictive. <laughs> so let's go to the next slide. All right, so it turns out there's so much going on in the brain. Um, I don't know about you, but I feel like my brain is going 90 miles an hour. My brain gets faster than my voice because I'm like, blah, 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 blah. And, but it's because that creative side, but it's because there's so much going on. And it's also, there's so much going on out here. And when there's all this going out here, you got all this in here, sometimes it's hard to stay calm, right? So when we can kind of bring that in, and one of the simple ways to do meditation is being creative. Um, according to Christine Strang, a professor of neuroscience of the University of Alabama, and she's also the former uh, president of the American Art Therapy Association. She says that creativity in itself is important for remaining healthy, remaining connected to yourself and connected to the world. <clears throat> That's very powerful when you really think about it. Um, let's go to the next slide. So I just wanna conclude with this. Um, let's see, where are we? Okay, yeah, we'll go on to the next one. Just a second. Yeah. Move you off your text there. There we go. Um, you know, therapeutic art is about the process and not the final product. It's like I said, what you're doing now, there's no right or wrong way, um, but it gives you permission to release judgment and enjoy the journey. And again, life is too short to not to enjoy the journey, right? Let's go to the next slide. This is me when I was little. So I was never, ever, ever afraid to get dirty. <laughs> in fact I had more fun in the dirt I was one of those kids that just wanted to go out and literally uh make mud pies and and play with paints and I was one of the kids that had the paint all over me to this day I can get paint all over me and I'm thinking how did I do that I'm just doing a little spot and in fact the fall I had to get paint all over me it was like everywhere but um but what but the thing is it's you know when a child or an adult it doesn't matter how you do it, whether you're messy or you're not. I mean, my husband is OCD. Put it this way. If he got a little paint on, he would change shirts. I Man's like, oh, bring it on, you know? So, uh, but it takes all kinds of personalities to understand that you are to enjoy your journey. You're to embrace where you are. And when we get caught up in the world and we get caught up with all the stuff that's going on, sometimes it's hard to de-stress. And how easy was this? Yeah, how many enjoyed just kind of doodling? Yeah, right? So um, 
let me ask you, who's going to go get an adult coloring book? <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of, and, and there's that, what's that bargain hunt, I think? Oh my gosh, they got so much variety and they're so reasonable. So you can go grab one there. But let's uh, close out to within the last slide here. Actually, I've got a couple more, but if you hear a voice within you say, you cannot paint, then by all means paint. And that voice will be silenced. Bingo. Yes. Right, and I was going to say, could, could we see everybody's art just kind of yeah. you know, hold up their art? And just I love it. Oh, that's so cool. Y'all give yourselves a hand. <laughs> Side note, we went to the Vincent Van Gogh show in over at Elvis's, and it was about an hour and a half to two hour experience, and we felt so calm and relaxed. We just sat down there and enjoyed, and it was a wonderful, wonderful show. I yes. know who did the uh, all the computer work, yes. it was an amazing show. So, if you ever get a chance somewhere to see that show, I'd yeah, they have different ones out there because I know Atlanta they had one. And what's interesting is when you go to those shows, it, I think one of their comments or their statements, they say, it says be immersed in the art and literally you are immersed in it. And it just, I mean, it just gives me chills thinking about it because it's so powerful. So listen to the last slide said, listen to your inner child and bring, bring out the better you. So thank y'all very much. Do y'all have any questions? All right, any questions? Or, oh, I, let me just,